Hey guys, what's going on? Today I want to get right into it and give you some quick advice for those of you who are in your first year or two of guitar. With all the extra time we've all spent at home trying not to go crazy, a lot of new people picked up the guitar at the start of COVID. Maybe you're one of them, maybe not, but maybe you made some progress, but now you're hitting a point where you want to find some ways to progress faster or find some things to spice up your playing or just learn some new things. Don't worry, my friend, I'm here to help you out because that's what friends do. Me and my team sat down for a little brainstorming and we looked back at our own guitar journeys and what we think we did right or wrong when we started. These are all things we wish we did better or mistakes we wasted a lot of time on. And I don't want you to make those same mistakes so that you don't have to spend the time banging your head against the guitar and can get to just playing and becoming that glorious musician that's inside of you. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna throw a bunch at you. First off, I wish I realized the difference that the right hand makes. It seems pretty obvious that the guitar is a two-handed instrument, but I remember for so long never learning anything new with my strumming. I always thought it was about new chords and left hand movements, but learning new styles, strumming, and picking patterns with your right hand can make the same chord progression sound completely different. For an example, just watch this. Neglecting timing and being worried you're bad at rhythm. Timing truly is an important part of the guitar and rhythm is really what makes people dance and tap along to the music even if there's not much to the melody. Just think of the drums. This is something that I was really bad at when I started guitar. I remember actually panicking so much at one point that I started searching on the internet to find if it's possible to be born with no rhythm at all. Turns out I was just really overreacting and the rhythm was there. I just had to find it and apply it to guitar. I did this just by listening to music and trying to count the beats and of course playing with a metronome. Don't panic too much about having bad timing. It does take a while to be able to express it on guitar that anyone with a heartbeat has a rhythm inside of them and it will come with time. Strumming too loud. I understand that making noise is fun, but if you ask anyone who's ever lived with a drummer, they'll beg you to please play quieter. The same thing goes for guitar. Strumming loudly sounds ugly and is a common trait of beginner guitarists. If you want to add dynamics to your playing, your loudest strum should be a normal hand motion with no real force applied. After that, just play softer, which is known as feathering the strings. Now another big thing is that when you're playing the strings, the sound travels out from the sound hole, and what other people hear is louder than what you hear. Don't believe me? Try turning your guitar up to face you and play a chord. You'll hear just how much louder it sounds. Recognize that chords are difficult. Chords are one of the first things that you learn on guitar, which makes people think that you learn them really quickly. This just isn't true. Chords are hard and honestly take a lot of time to play smoothly, and a lot of people quit if they don't get a chord within a few days, when realistically it actually takes several months to be able to play your basic chords smoothly. After that, playing chords is a never-ending battle. Even after months or years of guitar, you should still be careful listening to your chords, make sure they're smooth, and then the smoother you get at them, the more chords you'll start to learn. This is why bassists can sound like this in a month of playing, where a guitar player sound more like this. You're just not gonna have perfect chords quickly, and that's okay. They'll still sound pretty good if you can play them at all. Just keep working on it. I promise it'll come and it'll be worth it. Watch tutorials at half speed. This is something I wish I thought of way sooner. If you're ever having trouble with a tutorial, just go down to that settings button and change the speed to 0.5. This will help you so much when learning a new rhythm or if you're having trouble figuring out what they're actually playing. Try to play along with that speed and once you nail it, you can move on and try and play it faster. And our friends at Vidami and today's video sponsor actually made a pedal that makes this incredibly easy to do. When Amy from Vidami came to talk to me about putting in a video, I thought this was something that you guys would definitely want to see. This is the Vidami YouTube Looper pedal, and it's actually really cool. It can control YouTube videos so that you can loop sections, slow down the speed to practice specific parts, skip through the video and pause and play, all with just a single pedal so that you don't ever have to take your hands off the guitar.
This pedal is a great way to help learn those tricky songs faster and easier, and it's designed to work directly on YouTube videos, which is the coolest thing. It's for when you're sitting in your living room in front of your laptop going over those tutorials and re-watching the different parts. It's going to make that much quicker to do so that you can focus on practicing and playing and learning that great new song that you've been working on and getting that faster. And they agreed to give you guys a 10% discount on the pedal if you use the coupon code in the description at checkout. You can check it out in the link in the description of this video and you can get that discount for two weeks after this video is released. So guys, check out that pedal. It's really cool and I'm sure it'll really help you if you're someone who likes to learn from YouTube videos. Don't learn bar chords in the first six to 12 months. Everyone's so worried about getting bar chords quickly. Yeah, you're absolutely gonna need them to master the guitar, but they're really hard and require a ton of hand strength. They're just really hard to do. Unless you're someone who just loves a good hand workout, it's just not even bothering until you're at a point where you're the thousands of songs you can play without them isn't enough. <laughs> just get a capo, learn your simplified F chord, and come back to bar chords way down the road. Don't be nervous about progressing slowly. Easier said than done, but patience is key while learning the guitar. You'll constantly be tested on it, and I suggest you master it. And if you do, then message me and let me know how you figured out patience, because I'm still working on it to this day. When I teach lessons to my Mastering the Guitar program members, this comes up all the time. Everyone's worried that they're progressing slower than normal, and I think it's because there's this misconception that other people are seeing serious, crazy progress, and they're falling behind. I've taught hundreds of students, and I can tell you that you're probably progressing well. It just takes time to teach your hands new movements and improve your muscle coordination. Patience and consistency. That's the only way you'll master the instrument. Stay confident, one day you're gonna be a star. Don't try to play things perfectly to the point where it stresses you out. It's good to try and make things sound as good as they can, but at some point you've gotta move on and play something else if you wanna keep improving for your own sanity. Playing things exactly as they sound in the real version of the song is an advanced skill and it probably took the recording artist hundreds of tries to get one good take. It'll be something that you can practice one day, but for now, be happy with just playing a thing. You've gotta just throw the idea of perfection right out the window. It's an ideal and it doesn't exist. I've never played anything perfectly in my life. There's always gonna be more you could do to make it better, but that often ends up getting in the way of putting your soul into it and expressing the music when you get caught up in all the technical details. Don't be afraid of scales. Scales are good, and they help, but don't overcomplicate this. Learn your major, minor, and pentatonic scale, and that's it for now. They'll help you in more ways than one. Learn how to easily embellish chords. Embellishing chords can be as simple as taking on and off fingers. Explore your chords and see which fingers sound good to take on and off. This will give you slight variations on your standard chords, and that'll make your playing sound unique instead of generic. A good rule of thumb is try to put your pinky somewhere. For those of you who do play bar chords, this is especially goes for you. Here are some examples. Knowing the basics of guitar setup. Here are the three most important things to know about guitar setup that's gonna make your guitar much easier to play. Number one is tune your guitar regularly. I tune mine every day before I play, but once or twice a week will be good to start. Number two is adjust your guitar action. If there's more than about a coin's amount of space between your 12th fret and your strings, then your guitar could probably use an adjustment of the action. That's a more in-depth topic than I can cover in this video, but look up a tutorial and just try it out and just be careful with this one. Number three is buy new strings. Strings get old and rusty and replacing them is the easiest way to make your guitar play better. I personally recommend light gauge elixir strings. Light strings are easier to play and elixir strings are my favorite because they're buttery smooth and help you play faster. Just these three things can make your guitar much easier to play. Learn complete songs. Learn all the parts of the song, not just a few of them. It's good to have an idea of what's happening and the changes in the song that make it so pleasing to listen to. It's also something unsatisfying to a listener to only hear incomplete music all the time. How to know if a song is at your level. This is the most annoying part of being a self-taught guitar player. It's really hard to tell what songs are too difficult or too easy to play. Songs that are fast are way more difficult. If there are too many unfamiliar chords, it's also going to take a while. And play strongs that stretch your fingers, but avoid ones that dislocate them. Try the song a few times, and if you can't play it somewhat alright within a few tries, then just be aware that it's probably going to take you a long while to learn that song. You might want to consider trying a different one. I don't want to discourage you from trying anything, especially if you're up for a challenge, but hopefully this will help you rule out some songs and avoid some headaches. 
This is one of the biggest advantages of buying a dedicated guitar course. It'll be designed to take you from one level to the next using songs that are at your level, saving you the guesswork. If you want to check out my complete comprehensive guitar program where it'll guide you to reaching the next level of guitar playing, then you can check out the link in the description below this video. All right, and that's it for me, guys. Let me know if these tips were useful, and more than anything, let me know if they spiced up your playing. Make sure to subscribe to see all my new videos. Please hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. He is the only one that's played for four beats. Oh, that's so the useful. whole thing together is going to sound like this. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's sweet that you can set your loop time. Oh, I like that. Oh man, this would have been cool to have when I was learning. Yeah, I feel like people will like this. Yeah, this is really cool. Huh.